first let's do a simple experiment a simple experiment of spring mass system this is a spring which is connected to a mass of 1 kg and spring is having this much spring constant and this blue dotted line is the equilibrium point of spring means a point at which the spring force and gravitation force are equal so what we are going to do here we are stretching the spring by this much distance and we are releasing it so you know as you release the mass it will go up and it will come back to the original position and time required for this travel is known as time period and in this experiment we will measure what is the time period of this system we have got a timer over here so let's start the experiment I am releasing the mass I am measuring the time it is going up it has reached the top position now it is coming back uh, it says that time period of the travel is around 6.28 seconds fine now we will do one more experiment same spring mass system but here I am stretching it more so what might be your gut feeling about time period will it increase will it decrease you think it might increase because here the mass has to travel more distance compared to the first case anyway let's do this experiment we will measure it so it's going up as usual now it's coming back and time period of this oscillation is again 6.2 second so this is the finding of the day time period doesn't change with stretch of the spring it remains same for both the cases and in vibration world we commonly use a term called angular frequency omega like this 2 pi by time period so experimentally we have proved that frequency is a property of system it doesn't depend upon user input or initial condition now the big question what's the reason for that why time period remains same for both the cases to find answer for this we will do both the experiments simultaneously so here both the mass are going up with different amplitude and time period is same and you can see the first spring mass system travels more distance but at the same time it travels at a higher speed compared to the second case so that's the reason even if the distance traveled by the first case is more than second case it has got higher average speed compared to the second case so both this effect get negated and time period or frequency of the system remains same what about these systems is frequency of this bridge or electronic circuit this glass or chimney again a property yes you are right this is again a property you can define natural frequency for all these cases as you define Young's modulus or density it's just a property now what we have done experimentally we will do some mathematical analysis so here is the case here my mass is at equilibrium point I am stretching it and Y is measured positive in this way if you want to predict motion of any vibrating system the only law you have to know is Newton's second law of motion mass into acceleration is equal to total force on mass so you can represent mass into acceleration like d square by dt square is acceleration mass is same and here total force acting on the spring is only spring force that is minus ky minus sign is over here because spring force is always in opposite direction of displacement and you can solve this differential equation without much difficulty using some boundary condition and this will be the solution displacement of mass varies like a cosine function with respect to time and a is initial amplitude of the spring or initial stretch we have given so graphically you can represent like this a cosine wave and you can find out this time period from this equation as this now let's see this equations more physically this equation of motion and according to this equation my spring mass system will move like this it will keep on oscillating here what happens physically the potential energy of spring getting converted into kinetic energy of mass this energy is again given back to spring so the energy transfer keep on happening and energy is always conserved here but the next big question will this vibration continue forever like this not exactly right what do you see physically is something like this it will start oscillating and after some time the amplitude will decrease it will again decrease finally dies out but in previous case we found the amplitude never decreases that happened because we neglected something very important over there in that case we neglected friction of air surrounding the mass 
and this is known as viscous force and this viscous force can cause continuous energy loss to the system so energy is not exactly conserved in the system it keeps on decreasing so as energy decreases amplitude of the oscillation comes down you can see it graphically like this starting with a big amplitude finally slowly slowly decreasing finally it dies out and one thing to remember you can find out equation of this graph by solving this equation this is nothing but Newton's second law of motion here one additional force term comes the viscous force and it is proportional to velocity and C is coefficient of viscosity now what I am going to do I am going to replace this air by some fluid which is more viscous then oscillation will be like this it will die out eventually but die out very fast and you can see time period of the oscillation has increased now let's increase the viscosity of fluid again and this will be the result here the oscillatory effect of motion has decreased so you can see as you increase viscosity of surrounding fluid the tendency for oscillation of the spring mass system comes down so what we'll do now we will increase viscosity again and we'll find out a point where there is no oscillation at all it will be like this the mass will slowly go to the equilibrium point without any oscillation means the mass will start from here and it will slowly settle down to the equilibrium position and you can find out what's the viscosity of the fluid required to happen this critical damping with some mathematical analysis it will be like this as a function of spring constant and mass of the system if you increase viscosity of the fluid again even above this critical damping case that will be known as over damped there also there won't be any oscillation motion of mass will eventually die out through a different way and the effect of viscosity is represented like this on a spring mass system in next section we are going to see something with high industrial application at the same time interesting this phenomenon so let's see what it is you have got a spring mass system with some damping and you are standing here and pulling this mass with some force a force like this an oscillatory force with a frequency omega external and with an amplitude f external such a system will oscillate like this wow it never dies out amplitude remains same and this frequency of oscillation will be same as external frequency that's one important point it doesn't depend upon natural frequency of the system and this kind of vibrations are known as force vibration here because you are applying an external force over here and what about amplitude of this vibration this amplitude a is not the initial amplitude given by the user instead this will be a strong function of this external frequency and natural frequency of the system and the relation is like this when difference between these frequencies are very low the amplitude will be very high or when external frequency is very near to natural frequency of the system amplitude will be very high and if you can supply such a frequency which is very near to natural frequency and that condition is known as resonance where amplitude becomes very high and that may result in material damage